Hey, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the non-resident alien and the resident alien. This is for the uh, U.S. income tax purpose. So basically, if you are not a U.S. citizen and you are required to file uh, income tax to the U.S. government, so it's it is very important to understand. Uh, if you are a long resident aliens or resident aliens, because this has a profound implication on the amount of the income tax you're gonna pay to the U.S. government. First, what is an alien? Here, say for the tax purpose, an alien is an individual who is not a U.S. citizen. Here, I just want to clarify that. Uh, we talk about the tax law here, so it is different from the immigration law. Some terms used in immigration may not apply to tax law. So you want to follow the definition of the tax law to understand your filing status. Okay, basically say if you are not a U.S. citizen, you are called an alien. Then the aliens are classified as a resident uh, aliens or non-resident alien. So resident alien and non-resident aliens. So follow the text up. They are different. How different? They said resident aliens are generally taxed on their worldwide income, the same as U.S. citizens. The non-resident aliens are taxed on their income from the source within the United States and the certain income connected with the conduct of the trade or business in the United States. You can see, first of all, you already see it's a different, the amount of the income to be taxed is different. One is worldwide income. The other one is income from the U.S. source uh, only. You can see if you have a world income from different countries, you can see uh, you, you will uh, be taxed more on the status as the resident aliens compared to the non-resident aliens here. So uh, this is just the, you know, the basic thing. They say resident aliens, you are basically taxed as the same as a U.S. citizen. So as a U.S. citizen, you are usually eligible for all kinds of tax deduction, tax credit. So those uh, tax, uh, you know, deduction and the credit may not uh, be available to the long resident aliens. So that's another thing uh, different for the resident aliens and the non resident aliens. You can see the implication on the income tax amount is different. So now you're wondering if you are a resident alien or a long resident alien. So let's see. This is called the resident aliens test. So the U.S. government basically say if you are an alien, so basically you are not a U.S. citizen, you are considered a long, um, long re uh, resident aliens unless you meet one of the two tests described under the resident aliens below. The first one called the green card test. The second one called the substantial presence test. Let's see the green card test. Say you are a resident for the tax purposes if you are a lawful permanent resident of the United States at any time during the calendar year 2021. A lawful permanent resident, basically a green card holder, say you generally have this status if the U.S. citizenship and immigration service that's the government agency, USCIS, has issued you an alien registration card, uh, also known as a green card. So basically, the first test is that if you are a green card holder, you are considered a resident alien. So your income will be taxed worldwide, exactly like the U.S. citizen. 
Um, so basically, if you are a green card holder, you already a resident uh, alien. So you 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 already a resident alien. So you don't need to worry about another test. Here we talk about. However, if you are not a a green card holder, you gonna uh see if you are a resident alien or not. Um, to go through this called substantial present test. Here is uh from the IS publication five nineteen on the page four. This is IS give uh you know the test. Uh, there was a little bit of mathematic here, uh, a little complicated. Let's go through. I'm gonna show you two examples. So just make sure you understand how this math works here. Um. Okay. Let's read this. Say you are a resident for the tax purpose if you meet the substantial presence test for calendar year 2021. To meet the test, you must be physically present in the United States on at least. So you can see those two conditions, first condition and the second condition. First condition say thirty one days during the twenty twenty one. You have to understand twenty twenty one is the tax year. Tax year in in that tax year, you basically have to be. Physically present in United States at least thirty one days. After you meet this uh this condition, look at the second condition. Say basically one hundred eighty three days during the three year period in the calendar twenty twenty one twenty 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 nineteen, counting as all the days were present in twenty twenty one. One third of the days you were present in twenty twenty. One sixth of the days you were present in two thousand nineteen. So it's kind of complicated mathematics here. Okay, let's go through a、uh, example. We'll be clear after the example. This example is given by the IS. Um. Let's see. Say you were physically present in the United States on 120 days in each of the year 2021, 2020, 2019. 2019. So basically, it's like this. For last three years, each year you present physically present in United States 120 days. So let's see the first condition. They say. You have to be physical in United States in 2021 at least 31 days. First condition meet because you have a 120 days greater than 31 days. So first condition you meet, right? Let's see the second condition. Ah,、uh, so this is how you calculate. You count all the days in 2021. Then the Twenty twenty days, you only count a one third of it. One hundred twenty days, one third is forty days. In two thousand nineteen, you only count one six. So one six of one hundred twenty days is twenty days. So ah,、uh, add them together, you get a one hundred eighty days. One hundred eighty days is less than the one hundred eighty three days. That's the minimum days you have to be. Present for three years, so in this situation, you are not considered a resident under the substantial present test for 2021. Then you are a non-resident alien. So you can see, based on this test, you can identify self yourself as a non-resident alien. Then let's go through another example. So basically, very similar, uh, you know, wording here, but I'm just changing the number around. So, uh, let's say you were physically present in United States on forty days in twenty twenty one, three hundred days in twenty twenty, three hundred days in two thousand nineteen. So the number is like this. Let's look at the first condition: thirty one days during twenty twenty one. So you were present forty days, which is greater than thirty days, thirty one day. So you meet the first condition. Let's see the second condition. You count all the days in twenty twenty one, forty days. One third of the twenty twenty, 
is 100 days. So one sixth of the 2,950 days, you add them together, 190 days. So in this situation, 190 days is greater than 183 days. You are considered a resident under the substantial present test. So you are resident aliens. So you can uh, see here for last year, you only, you know, present in United States only 40 days, but you're still eligible for the uh, resident aliens test uh, here. So now you know how the mathematics works. Um, this is basically how you identify if you are a resident aliens or non-resident aliens. Um, so if you are resident alien, is that a good thing or bad thing? Uh, it's completely uh, based on your individual situation. If you have a substantial you know, income from overseas, that may not be a good thing to you at all because you have to pay the entire income worldwide to the United States government. So that just depends on your individual situation. Um, anyway, so I'm going to talk about more on this, uh, you know, uh, those income in the future. So just uh, stay tuned. Thank you for you watching. Uh, okay, bye.